Once you have your Shapeoko built, the next thing that you want to do is configure your settings. So in this video, we're going to talk about that. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. And in this video, I want to share with you how to configure the settings for the Shapeoko that you have. Whether you are the first owner or the second or third owner because you purchased it secondhand, it doesn't matter. The steps are the same. I'm a visual learner, so I prefer to be able to see what I should be doing. So if that's you, this is going to be a step-by-step -step video instruction on how to configure your settings. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, guys, so jumping into Carbide Motion, the very first thing before we start is you want to make sure that your CNC is connected to the computer or laptop that you are using. So that is the wire or the cable that they have provided to connect the CNC to the the computer so go ahead and make sure that that is connected once you have that connection you're going to go ahead and click on connect to cutter in carbide motion once you get this job info screen you are now connected to your cnc before we even load a file or even initialize our machine we need to configure the cnc appropriately so we need to go ahead and click on settings so as i was practicing for this video i have changed my cnc settings to a different size cnc than i currently have so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to configure my current cnc appropriately so when you click on settings you're going to click on this machine tab first as you can see here i have the travel dimensions set up here in millimeters x y and z this is not the correct size for me and it might not be the correct size for you for you guys so go ahead and click on load defaults in this pop-up we're going to set the x and y travel so how far can my machine travel in the x and y direction so go ahead and select the machine of your choice in my particular case i do have the shapeoko 3xxl but the current values are set for the shapeoko 3 standard so take a look at these values they are going to change i'm going to select the shapeoko 3xxl Click OK. So now we're going to set the Z travel. How is my router moving up and down? In the drop down menu, you have belt driven, Z plus, or HDZ. Go ahead and select the most appropriate choice. Click OK. So once we have the travel dimensions set, we're going to send the configuration data, basically locking in those settings. So go ahead and click on send configuration data, select the machine type. So in this case, it is a Shapoko 3 with a Z plus, and we're going to click OK. It's going to send the machine configuration and lock in those settings. So once we have our CNC travel dimensions set up, let's go ahead and click on the options tab. Here you're going to select the appropriate spindle type. I have the carbide compact router, but you have the router with the bit runner and the VFD spindle options here. This dialog box says show carbide compact router RPM values. I'm not sure where exactly that is, but it is defaulted selected, so I'm going to leave it there. If you know what this impacts or where this is visible, leave me a note in the comments below. In the bit zero section here, go ahead and select what's most appropriate to you. I currently have none, so I'm gonna select none. In the bit setter section, whether or not you have it or you don't, go ahead and disable it. What we wanna do first is we wanna initialize the machine without this being enabled. Once we have the machine initialized, we're gonna come back and then set this up. So that'll be a separate video. When you initialize the machine with the bit setter enabled, it's going to want to go to the location of the actual bit setter. So if you don't have it set up, it's not going to initialize correctly. So right now, if you're brand new and you have the bit setter, don't worry about enabling it just yet. So go ahead and configure your CNC without this enabled. And we're going to come back to that later. So now with this screen completed, we're going to click on the user interface tab. And the only thing that you need to change here is whether or not you want your units to be in millimeters or inches. I prefer inches, so we'll keep it there and we're going to click OK. At this point, you are now able to initialize the machine. At this point, the Z axis will move up in the positive direction until the Z axis proximity switch is engaged. The Z axis will then back off slightly before re-engaging the switch and then backing off for a final time and setting the Z axis to machine origin. Once that is completed, the X and Y axis will begin to move. The X axis will move to the right, which is the positive direction, and the Y axis will move to the back, which is the positive direction. The X and Y axis will continue to move until one of their switches is triggered, at which time they will follow the same pattern as the Z axis. Engage the homing switch, back off, re-engage, and then back off again. So when all three axes have been homed, your router will be in the back right corner. So there you go guys, my machine is now initialized and it is also proving or demonstrating that my configuration settings were correct. I hope this video helps and we'll see you guys on the next one. If you have the bit setter, go ahead and click on your screen now so I can show you how to set that up as well. I'll see you guys there.